Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be starting the new series, Sick Cosplay. Basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you piece by piece how I make an entire costume in a series of videos. And today we're starting with the Joker. That's right, we're going old school back to Jack Nicholson Joker. This Joker is almost 30 years old, ladies and gentlemen. And I figure we're going to start off this series kind of light for you guys. So you can get a kind of a little bit of a feel about how I'm going to do it. So we're going to start off with the tie. So basically, I got online, looked for that fabric. I could not find it anywhere. So I knew I was going to have to get creative. And what I have in mind is I'm going to take both of these two fabrics and see which one wins my little race here and is going to provide the best looking finish that I'm going for. So it's a light satin and a taffeta. Getting creative. My thought was I'm going to take transfers. That's right, I've got a dark transfer. I've got a light transfer. I also have a stretch transfer. And I've used all three of these. And then I also found this transfer, which is not going to work for the series because I realized it's actually a cotton piece of fabric. But I am going to try these other three, um, the stretch, the light, and the dark. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create the polka dots for the tie. And I'm not sure which one of these is going to work with it. So I found this little Fiskars uh, punch at Joann's. It was $10. So I figure what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a taffeta and a satin race. So I'm going to cut out one for the stretch, one for the light, and one for the dark. And we're going to iron them on and see which one will make that uh, appropriate polka dot that I'm looking for. <laughs> that seems like such a, a long way to do this, but like I said, I couldn't find the fabric anywhere. And, um, you know, 30 years is a long time. That's three decades. That's a long time. And I'm pretty sure you could probably find that fabric somewhere. But getting creative is more fun. So we're going to go with it. <laughs> okay, so I've got my hole punch. And like I said, we're going to cut two dots out of each page. And I'm actually going to take this little plastic door off the back of it first and we're going to put that aside because I want to make sure that I'm utilizing space on this piece of paper and cutting my dots out appropriately. I mean, it's not scientific or anything, but we're going to go ahead and just punch out these dots and then we're going to head over to the ironing board. So I've got my stretch transfer and my light transfer and my dark transfer. And we're gonna go ahead and try it out on both of these to see which fabric is going to yield the look that I'm going for. Now, when you're working with satin or taffeta, they can be temperamental. So the heat might that you have to use for the transfer might not be very good on this fabric. So um, I just grabbed a piece of cotton fabric and I'm going to use that kind of as my little pressing cloth. So that way my taffeta doesn't start to shrivel and shrink and scorch because that would be bad. Okay, so I finished up ironing on these and the stretch didn't work. The stretch just did not adhere very well to this fabric. And here's the light. And that actually looks pretty good. I should have ironed it a little bit longer. I can see there's a bubble in there. And then the bottom one looks like there's a piece of paper on it still. There's not. <laughs> um, that's the stretch. That's the light. And that's the dark. And what I found out is that the stretch... Uh, did not take on this fabric and it still showed up kind of frosty. The light worked good, but the dark came out white because you have to print a color onto it. <laughs> so I think we're going to have to go with the light. 
So I wanted to take a minute to blow up the pictures of the Joker tie on my big screen in my office so I can kind of get a better look. I wasn't 100% happy with the light transfer. I mean, it, it looked good, but I it's still not what I wanted completely. And then I forgot I have one other thing that I can use. Now, this one's my light. And um, you can see it is reflective. It is kind of shiny. But I want a little bit more shiny pop. So I found another product that I have. And you can see that it reflects. It's shiny. And this stuff is actually Vinyl Fuse. And I found this at Joann's not too long ago when I was working on a different project. And it comes in a roll kind of like this where the vinyl's on one side with paper attached to the other side. And I totally forgot that I had this. So I was like, we're going to try it out and see if it works. Basically what you do is you pull the vinyl off of the piece of paper and that side is kind of sticky. And we're going to put it on the fabric and then you'll take the paper that you pulled it off of and it's kind of shiny where you pulled it off of, but then you put that over the top of that vinyl on your fabric and then you iron it. And this is the result. And I really like the way the vinyl fuse showed up. Like that light turned out really good, but that vinyl fuse is really what I'm looking for. And yes, always do stress tests to make sure that it's gonna perform properly and behave the way you want it to. Moving along to cutting out the actual tie part. I basically took one of my um, fabric measuring tapes, I wrapped it around my mannequin's neck and I squeezed. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I just measured how long I wanted the tie to be. I wasn't 100% sure. I think I came up with some odd 84 inches in the end <laughs> because we're wrapping it all the way around the neck and then you have to make the bow. And I figured better to be too long than not long enough. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to true up my edges of the fabric and I ended up cutting this at a six inch width. And I'm going to find the 45 on uh, angle on my clear ruler. I absolutely love this ruler. Um, these are the only kind I really carry in my shop um, that I work with because they just make measuring stuff so easy. So we'll go ahead and cut that out. And there you go. We got the, uh, the whole tie part cut out and now we're going to go to the sewing machine. Okay. Little OCD Susie. <laughs> I use this tray for all of my sewing feet just because it is, it just helps keep everything organized. And I'm all about organization with some things. <laughs> so today we're going to be using a narrow rolled hemmed foot. And this is what it looks like top and bottom. I know you guys, a rolled hemmed foot is kind of like a bra. Not everyone really likes them, but you kind of get used to them. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you to the best of my ability. What you're going to do is you're going to line your fabric up with the edge of the foot. And what I do is I take at least four to five steps forward and then I back off the fabric. Then what I'll do is I'll pull the fabric out of the machine and leave the thread attached so that way I can use it as like an extra handle to kind of floss it back into the foot. And here's kind of a close up you'll see. I just came down maybe quarter to half of an inch and as you can see right here it's basically doing a double roll of that fabric in through that foot and what I'll do is I'll use my right hand with that thread in the back and I'm going to use my right foot to tap my pedal to drop my needle and then what I'll do is I'll reach up and I'll put my foot down after the needle is into the fabric I know that sounds like a lot but 
it's the best way that I've found to do um, a rolled hem. And the only other thing I can really say is just go slow and steady. This rolled hem takes years of practice. Um, I did not perfect it. In fact, I still don't think I'm perfect at it. Um, but I practiced this for years and years and I've tried tons of different techniques. This is the one that just makes the most sense to me. And as you can see, not every hem is perfect, but this one looks good. So we're going to go with it. Um, for the love of a tutorial, <laughs> I am now straddling my camera for you. <laughs> I wanted to show you kind of my POV of how I do this, just so you can get a really good close look at it. Uh, I think the other camera angles, it's good, but it's, I mean, when you can see it like this, it's better. So, okay. So, you can see my right hand goes behind the machine with all those threads and I'm basically using it like floss. And then I tap my gas pedal to sink the needle and I reach up with my right hand and drop my foot after the needle is sunk into my fabric. And you have to bear with me because quite literally the camera is like six inches from my hand right here so we're we're trying to work with it it's all for the love of sewing and teaching <laughs> okay so you want to make sure that you straighten out your fabric before you go and like I said slow and steady and don't be afraid of these little frays that are sticking out um, you can trim those if they do stick out too far. But you'll see this fabric right here. When it starts scooting too far to the left, you're going to want to reposition your fabric. So there's quite literally, I want to say like an eighth of an inch of fabric that's going into that little uh, cone. Because when it starts getting more like a quarter of an inch, that's when the rolled hem doesn't look like a rolled hem anymore it'll end up flattening out. And you'll see right here, when that fabric starts to kind of curve up, that's when you want to reposition. You'll see it right there. And I'll just take a, a pokey thing and I'll kind of push it back down and then I'll go. And I do use my stiletto quite frequently with sewing too. I found that the stiletto actually helps with um, sewing projects like this. That helps with everything, but. <laughs> okay, so you can see we're doing really good here. And I changed the camera position because I didn't want to be straddling my camera for the next hour while I was working on this. I'm sorry. And part of the reason why I like to do voiceovers is because I'm listening to some really loud music in the background while I'm working. I always like to crank up the tunes while I'm working on a new project. So we're coming down to the end of one edge. And when I get down to the edge, I usually like to grab my pair of tweezers and just kind of pinch it until it goes through. Just a little extra helping hand. And that's pretty much it, you guys, uh, for the sewing part of this tutorial. Um, you can go through with the little threads that are hanging out from that seam and just kind of give them a quick trim. And we are ready to poke a dot like crazy. <laughs> okay, so I printed off a picture of Jack Nicholson and all his loveliness. <laughs> such a handsome man such a crazy man <laughs> Joker one of the most iconic comic book characters of all time 
and quite possibly one of the coolest Batman movies, the 89 Batman. Okay, so basically, starting out with the polka dots, I had a straight pin, and I was just trying to stick it in between the vinyl and the paper, because I have to peel all this paper off all this vinyl. And I very quickly found out that if I just pinch the polka dot, like the tip of the polka dot, in between my fingers and then rub my finger the opposite way, the vinyl just kind of pops off that paper. So it was pretty easy. And then I just go through and stick it down to the fabric where I visually see fit. You could always make some kind of grid um, to help guide you to putting down all these polka dots, but I live life on the edge, you know? <laughs> so I'm just gonna eyeball this and Hope that it doesn't turn out janky. <laughs> Story of my life. And the coolest part of this is before you actually go through and iron all of these dots um, to the fabric, you can pick them up and reposition them because the adhesive on it is, I, I mean, I wouldn't even call it adhesive, but I mean, it's slightly tacky. So if you kind of mess up, you can go ahead and pick the dot up and move it. So from a previous project that I had done with this vinyl before, I had a large sheet of the paper and I held on to it because I'm a hoarder. No, I held on to it because I knew it would come in handy. <laughs> anyway, so I just took this uh, paper, which we're going to put the shiny side down toward the vinyl and you want to make sure that you do not have steam on your iron and that you're applying pressure and you can kind of see these polka dots start to get a little bit dark on the back side of this paper and that's when you know it's doing its job and then of course I use my wooden clapper to kind of remove some of that heat uh, and it also does help set everything and then you'll see some of this adhesive does kind of seep through the back of this fabric. So you want to make sure that if you're working on some, um, like the white fabric that I use as my drop cloth, I don't mind if it gets messed up uh, and it doesn't get too sticky or too messy or anything, but just make sure that it's not something that you don't want ruined, which you should be doing anyway. So again, we're going to go and put down a whole bunch of dots before I end up going through and ironing again. And I'm just doing this like a little bit at a time, like section by section. It just made it a lot easier on me. And I actually took a piece of paper from the dark transfer that we used earlier in the video because this is actually silicone paper, which is basically the same stuff that the vinyl came on. And I gave it a good iron and you can see that the dots kind of peer through it easier when you can see that it's ready. And I actually like the way that it looked a lot better than the original paper that I first started using. So probably when I get done, I'm going to go back through and re-iron the entire tie with this silicone sheet for a better look. And I want to say that this whole process from start to finish probably took me right about nine hours. Um, I think I ended the video there and I came back the next day and refilmed because all of my rings are gone. <laughs> but it was worth it. And I don't know about you, but I'm getting some serious Connect Four vibes. <laughs> Does anyone remember that game? It was like a board game from like the late 70s to like the mid 80s. So crazy. So I went into my storage room, grabbed a black button up shirt and just wrapped the tie around it just to see how it turned out. 
Okay, so I started editing the tie video today and the more and more I looked at the tie, I really like the way the fabric came out. I mean, this is as close as I could get to the original, I think, because I looked everywhere online and couldn't find it. But my biggest problem is having this much fabric underneath the collar might not be very good. So I went back to an old tie that I did uh, for the same client a couple years ago. And this is actually a tuxedo tie where it's got this little hook over here and it connects with this little, sorry, with this little round hook right here. And then it adjusts by this little sliding thing. This is what you would call a traditional tuxedo tie. So I started thinking just for the sake of my client not having to like retie and have to deal with like the paper that you need for this type of fabric um, because you have to have that silicone. You can't just iron this. You have to actually have that silicone sheet to put over the top of this to iron it out. Um, you could probably um, steam shot this, but you wouldn't want to actually lay an iron over the top of this without having that um, silicone paper. So what I was thinking is that I'll make a little rig that's similar to this um, and tie a beautiful bow like this and hand tack it the way that I want it to look. And I think we'll end up cutting this side off a little bit more so it hangs down the same way that it does in his tie. Um, and maybe make the little bows a little bit smaller. But just that way so it, it is more of a practical tie and they won't have to fuss with making a pretty bow every time they put it on. Anyway, so that's where my mind frame is at. And I think I'm going to do a few measurements off of this one. I think I have these tie clips in my storage. And I know I definitely have a bunch of these because these are the same kind of slides that used for either a vest or a bra and I think I have a ton of these in storage so yeah I think we'll um make the tie like this and let's continue on I'll edit the video so that way you guys can see how I do this okay so this part is completely optional you could totally keep the tie the way that it is but if you want to learn how to make this a um, clip-on type of tie then this is how I'm doing it. And I'll probably keep a lot of this in real time so you can kind of get a really good view of how I'm doing it. But I basically just took um, an interfaced piece of the same fabric. I used a really lightweight interfacing, but I wanted it to have a little bit more stability than the other bow tie that I showed you. Just because that one felt kind of floppy and I want to make sure that this one is a little bit more stable. There's a bigger bow on this one, so. And if you've been with me for a minute, then you know that I'm going to grab my trusty alligator hemostats to pull my tube. And I'm going to back out a little bit with my camera. No, out, not in. <laughs> So we'll go ahead and we'll just slide this onto my hemostat and I just pinch a bit of the fabric in between the teeth and close. I've seen a lot of tube turners out there and I've invested in a lot of tube turners and I used to do the safety pin method, but these are just like, these are a godsend. These are perfect. They're not even what this tool is designed to do, but, um, they are in my shop. I love them. 
I swear by him. <laughs> so basically we're going to pull the tube out the right way. I'm not even going to worry about cutting my ends just yet. And you can leave that seam down the center or let's look at this one. This one's down toward one side, so you could um, press it over to closer to one side or, I mean, whatever your little heart desires. But we're going to go iron it, and I'll be right back. Jamming out here. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to clip my ends just to make sure that they are nice and straight so I can attach all the hardware for the bow tie. And I've got this other bow tie handy just so I can look at it for reference. But basically, let me grab all the hardware so I can actually show you. There are three pieces. There is this little slide which helps you adjust the tie. And then there is the eye and then the hook and those go on either end to actually close the tie so we're going to attach the eye first because you can clearly see that that goes on the edge of the, the actual tie part So I'm grabbing a pin and my handy tweezers again and I'm just gonna bend this piece of fabric over and make a nice fold just so we can tuck away the raw edge somewhere and we're just gonna pin that in place for right now I want to make sure that I've got all of the parts the moving parts on here first before I go through and actually sew everything together. So we're going to look down at the bottom of the tie. And this is how it will face. So if you look down this strap right here. There's that hook on the end, but I don't want to mislead you guys, so I'm trying to figure this out while I'm kind of filming, but what you're going to see is the next piece of hardware on this strap is going to be this slide, and it'll be right here. You can see right there. It's the next piece of hardware that has to go on to the the, sl the strap so we're going to take this little other end that I already had on here off and I'm going to put the slide just how it is right here where I'm going up through the bottom and then down through the other side so we'll go up through the bottom and then down through the other side And when you're doing replication of something, um, kind of looking at something from start to finish is, is like reverse engineering is pretty much what I'm doing. And you kind of get used to reverse engineering once you've done it quite a few times. So, okay, so the next hardware is going to be this hook. And we want to make sure that the hook hook part is facing down. See that? So it'll be facing down. So here's my hook. We'll make sure that we put this on here the same way, facing down. Don't play me. <laughs> okay. So... This is where it gets kind of tricky. 
So just bear with me. We're going to turn this over and look at it from the back. So basically what we have here, the end of the tie goes around this center bar. So let me move this out of the way for you real quick so you can kind of get a good view of this. See this bar in the middle that's still showing through? We're going to go in the top and come back out the bottom almost the same way that the other fabric is going through here. So we'll go in through the top and right there's a hole for the bottom and down through the bottom. So we've basically just created another loop. Let me show you on the other tie. And then basically what you're gonna do is roll that edge over and stitch it to itself. And I really hope I'm not losing you. I know this is kind of confusing, but you'll be able to see, like when I hold it like this, it kind of creates like a little Y. And that's the same thing that the green tie does. I don't know why they make everything so confusing. <laughs> okay, so I'm actually going to take this part to my sewing machine first. And we're just gonna do a top stitch right there. And I actually want to show you guys while I'm doing this top stitch so you can kind of see I have to push part of the strap through the back side and then just because I don't have my photography light set up because this was so last minute I am actually going to grab my iPhone and I'm going to record two at once so you can kind of get a really good POV of how I'm sewing this together. So here's my iPhone. <laughs> Getting more creative. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is I'm just stitching where this was folded over just that one edge. I know it looks like there's a lot in there, but they're I'm just quite literally sewing those two edges together. And I'm gonna do a little bit more back tack to make sure it doesn't come apart. This is where most of the stress is going to come in the tie because this is where the end is attached and where you adjust from. And there you have it. I really hope that helps you guys kind of get a better uh, view of how this is kind of put together. I'm going to go ahead and cut all my threads. Then we're going to go ahead and top stitch this one because this is where the bow is going to be attached to. And we'll zoom me back in. And we are almost done, guys. I'm so close. I hope you're still with me and you're not confused because I've been trying to explain this the best I can. But then, oh, Susie, pulled on the wrong side of the tie. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, I was sitting here looking at it going, what the hell did I do wrong? It's supposed to look like that. How come it looks like this? So I ended up pulling on the whole, <laughs> the whole tie until the end kind of fell into where it was supposed to be. I seriously, I thought I had screwed up and I was like, don't tell me I recorded all that for nothing. But I didn't. I just pulled on the wrong side of the tie. So we're good. <laughs> and 
and it looks just like the other one. So we're going to go ahead and attach the other side real quick with the real fast front and back tack. And there you have it. And hook those together and pull your slide so that way you can kind of adjust it down. I like to make these extra long just so you make sure that you have enough room. Better to have too much room than not enough because you can always take away. It's too hard. It's harder or difficult to put back, if that makes any sense. I know it does. <laughs> Anyway, so what I'm doing here is I'm just using a leather needle. I'm having to pierce through a lot of fabric, so it was kind of a pain in the butt, and it's going through that vinyl that we uh, adhered onto the top of it. But I'm just going to go ahead and attach this bow to the front of the tie band, and we're done. That's it. Congratulations. If you've made it this far, you're a trooper. So um, I grabbed my iPhone again to pull up some pictures just so I can make sure that it was laying the proper way and let me dim my phone a little bit here so that way you can kind of get a good view and the tie I'm looking at multiple pictures online and it looks as if his tie is not really pointy like a tie like it's I don't know. I'm going to look at a few more pictures up close here. Yeah, it's the same one I've got. Anyway, so with all of the pictures that I'm looking at online, it looks as if his bow tie is a little bit more... I don't know, like um, thin. It's not pointy up at the top and up at the bottom or down at the bottom. It looks kind of, I don't know, scrunched together, almost kind of sad or something, which can easily be fixed. Yeah, there's the same picture and it's not pointy. The bows, the tips of the bows aren't pointy. So I'm just gonna, I'll say typically, grab my fingers and squish the bow. <laughs> I would imagine the fabric that they used on the original one was probably a little bit less stiff, but I mean, that looks pretty dang good. Anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying this and you're learning something. Next, I'm going to be working on the vest, so definitely stay tuned to this series. I think we're going to go the vest, the shirt, the pants, and I might even throw in a trick flower. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel before you leave. Follow me on all other social media, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.